But dang, I was not expecting this. Holy crap, this looks Are testing some new drip some new apple drip and that is the iphone 13 pro and now when apple did their launch event for the iphone 13 they had a lot of good specs but like a lot of you guys the one thing that i care about the most had to be the cameras and now apparently the iphone 13 pro got a huge bump in camera specs especially compared to my old iphone 10. yes pimpin i was rocking the iphone 10 look if you don't know me if you don't know this boss i put myself on a four-year plan which means i only upgrade phones every four years because i mean let's be real it's getting ridiculous out here on these streets this was my year to upgrade and i went for the iphone 13 pro so with that said we're gonna do some tests for creators we're gonna see we're checking the stabilization the audio the video quality and we're just trying to see does it vlog though Okay, we are on the iPhone 13 Pro. And I gotta say, it's not bad. We're using a front-facing selfie camera and shooting at 4K 30. And it looks really good. Uh, is it comfortable to use out in public? I don't think so. <laughs> but like, as a content creator overall, can this work? That's what we're gonna find out. And now, I was never a big fan of like vlogging or making content with your iPhone or your phone just because phones tend to look way over sharpened and very digital, like super digital when, when you're looking at the face and just skin tone overall, they seem, it just seems way over sharpened and way too digital. But on the other hand though, there are a lot of pros to using your phone to, to make your content. Okay, so with this vlogging, how does it sound? I'm wondering, I'm like very curious how the audio sounds. So what do you guys think? Does it sound good? Does it suck? Is it good? Is it usable? This is straight out of the phone, straight out of camera. No mic, nothing. So how does it sound? And I'm on a street right now. The sun's right by my eyeballs. Okay, now we are away from a busy street. How is it now? How does the audio sound? Is it like, is it usable? That's what I really want to know. I'm not gonna lie about it, pimp. I have listened to a couple of video like clips that I've already shot. Yeah, it, yeah, I'm not gonna lie, it sounds really good. Now, another advantage about vlogging or creating content from your phone is the simple fact that you always have your phone on you. Like, no matter what, you always have it in your pocket. So, just be able to pull it out and maybe put it on like a Joby Gorilla Pod or or just handhold it. That that is something that's amazing and. Yeah, it should like it really doesn't stop you from creating anything, which is a huge plus. Okay, we are still on the front face camera shooting at 4K 30, and I think we should switch it to the wide, like the ultra wide lens. Like, holy cow! Well, you know what? Let's do the wide lens first, the rear wide lens first, and then, and then the ultra wide. So let's switch it and see how those two do. Okay, now we are on the wide angle lens, uh, how does it look? And I mean, how does it sound? Cause I'm sure there's, a, I think there's a mic on this side too as well. So how does it look? How does it sound? Uh, let me know, it should look a little bit better just because the cameras are a little bit bigger than, I, mean, I think a lot bigger actually than the front facing camera, than the selfie camera. So it should look okay, but how does it look though? Now, although you're getting better quality or you should be getting better quality, you do lose the fact of you cannot see what you are shooting, but that quality though should be good. Another thing that kind of sucks when you're using like the rear cameras is that, yeah, you don't, you get that GoPro effect where, you know, since the rear screen is always on, people walking towards you, they, they, they all up in your grill. You know what I mean? You, you know what I mean, Pippin? Like, again, I don't want them to see how I look when I'm vlogging or film. Like, I don't want them to see that. So, yeah, that kind of sucks. As well as, you don't know if you're recording. Like, I, I, like it could have stopped and I wouldn't even know. I would just, I'd just be talking to myself. <laughs> We are near this tunnel. I got some running room straight ahead. Let's test out the stabilization. All right, you ready? Stabilization test and go. How is it? Is it better than the GoPro? Is it better than the DJI Pocket 2? That's what I really want to know. Is 
it's better than the Sony. Okay, still shooting in 4K 30 with the rear-facing camera, just walking straight. Okay, now we gotta bring the drip because one of my favorite things about these newer iPhones is the fact that you get an ultra-wide lens. So let's switch it to the ultra-wide right now. Okay, how does this look? We are in, we are using the ultra-wide lens. Like, for real, how does it look? Like, can you see my whole body? Can you like see the street over there? Like, man, I really like this ultra wide lens. And I really like the fact that you can actually switch between the lenses while you're recording, which is like, oh, freaking love it. So yeah, how is it? How's it for an iPhone? Again, we're shooting at 4K 30 with the ultra wide lens. How does this look? So I'll just look at the footage because I, you know, I'm being sneaky, but honestly, I just wanted to make sure I press record because I wasn't sure. I couldn't remember if I actually pressed the record button or not, but yeah, I'm just double checking to make sure I press record. And it's crazy, but it looks like, I, I think that the iPhone actually stabilizes the footage after you shoot it. I don't know how, but I feel like the footage is like, at least from looking at the front facing camera, it was a lot shakier than when I actually played it back. So I, I don't know, that would be just crazy. Oh, that guy bumming right here. Look at this guy. Bumming his P Diddy. All right, I'm back on another busy street. Again, in the ultra wide. Uh, how is it? How does it sound? How does the rear mic sound? I would love to know that. Uh, there's a bunch of cars coming. This guy in the scooter's coming. I don't know how fast that guy's going. Now, just for another test, just a quick low light test. I'm gonna walk through this tunnel and we'll see how the iPhone handles semi low light footage. Like semi, like super semi low light. Cause this is not. Okay, we are in the tunnel. How does it look? Semi low light, how, how we looking? Does it look extra digital? I don't know, it, it might. <laughs> so, I mean, we'll just have to wait and see when we look at the footage. <laughs> and now something else that Apple has introduced to their iPhones this year that had me like on the edge of my seat had to be cinematic mode. Like that was like, I saw it and I was like, oh, hold up, happened. We got to test that out. So. Let's go ahead and test out cinematic mode because we all know that Apple, like, it was probably on like a million, maybe two, $200 million set that they shot this cinematic mode on. So let's go ahead and check it out. Let's see how cinematic mode handles. I mean, let's just see what it looks like for a normal person, like a normal person without $200 million. I mean, not yet, but let's just see how it looks like for a normal person. Okay, now we are in cinematic mode. Now, again, when I saw this, I was like, oh snap, this might be it. But at the same time, in the back of my mind was like, nah, this ain't it. Like, this can't replace my Sony a7S III. Like, are you crazy? Like, there's no way that this looks better than my Sony a7S III. I mean, that's what the back of my mind is saying. So I won't know until I get back home though and look at the footage. But this is cinematic mode. How are we look? How does it look? How, what do you guys think about the cinematic mode? What's cool about it to me is a simple fact that you can actually adjust, like you can adjust the f-stop in real time, which is something I've like, I, it's just unheard of. I've never, I mean, I'm in the game. Like, come on guys, come on, you know I'm boss, but I have never heard of this. Like, this is like, that is crazy. And yeah, I mean, that's, I gotta give it to Apple for that. Cause that is like, that is on some next level stuff right there. Like to be able to do it all like digitally, like after you shoot it, that's insane. But on the other hand though, you gotta point out the fact that you cannot shoot in 4K. Actually, you can't even choose what you shoot in because it's automatically shooting in 1080p at 30 frames a second. Like you can't even shoot in like 24 frames, 60 frames. You can't shoot in none of that. You are locked in at 1080p, 30 frames a second. But yeah, I mean, how does it look so far? Like for real, be honest, how does it look? Oh, and this is also on the rear face camera. You know what, let's go ahead and switch to the front face camera to see how cinematic mode looks using the front face camera. Wow, all right, now we are on the front facing camera. How did, wow, that actually, wow. I'm not gonna lie, that, that looks solid. Like, it, wow, that really looks good. I wonder how it looks in low light though. Like, it's, it's always something, you know, it's always something. That would be real. I haven't noticed much of a difference between the quality from the rear face camera and the front facing camera. Now, I'm sure there's a difference, but I'm just not seeing it. I'm not, at least I'm not seeing it on the phone. <laughs> now, 
not for nothing. Yeah, it looks much better than a GoPro. <laughs> I mean, I have to get on a computer and look at the footage myself, but yeah, it's already looking better than a GoPro looked. That shit looks really good. Wow. And this is the front facing camera. Who knew? Seriously, I'm actually really impressed by what I'm seeing. Like, I'm like shocked. This is cinematic mode in 1080p 30. And yeah, even cinematic mode look, doesn't look too bad. Uh, again, this is not too extreme low light conditions, but yeah, it is low light conditions and that looks really good. Like, I'm just like, I'm like shocked by, wow. Oh no, I think we just hit the limit. I think it's starting to fall apart. It looks like it's just kind of breaking up a bit with the cinematic mode. <laughs> Yeah, you can see it. You can see it in the skin. It's like breaking up. Okay, now this is 4K 30 with the ultra wide lens selected. So how does it look? We're about to walk into some like really low light with this phone. Uh, how's it looking? Yeah? Is it a bunch of noise in it? <laughs> Dang. I was just getting some couple more shots and it started raining. So I think we're gonna have to cut the test short and head home. Fuck, cause it's raining a lot. <laughs> All right, we are back. And I have to say the iPhone 13 Pro actually performed really well as like a vlog camera and like just a camera for content creators. I, like, I'm, I'm gonna be real, it was, it was surprising, especially when I was outside. I noticed that when I was outside, I actually really enjoyed using it and just pulling it out of my pocket and just vlogging. You know what, actually, let's just go ahead and get to the pros and the cons of using the iPhone 13 Pro as not only a content camera, but a vlogging camera. And let's start with the pros. And now one of the pros of vlogging with the iPhone 13 Pro has to be the convenience. It's small, thin, fits in your pocket, and you always have it on you because it's your cell phone. So like you're out and about, you're like, hey, you know what, pimpin', I wanna get this shot. You left all your gear at home, you always have your phone on. So convenience factor, definitely a plus. Another pro that I have to throw out there is the audio quality. Man, I, now, I'm gonna be real pimpin'. I didn't think the audio quality was gonna be this good, but yeah, it's, it's really good. And I'm talking straight out of camera. No external mics, none of that. Straight out of camera, the audio quality is good. I'm shocked by it. Like, I just wasn't expecting the audio quality to be that good. And now the next pro has to be the cameras and the image quality. I love the ultra wide lens. Like, that, to me, that's one of the best lenses. I love having an ultra wide lens when vlogging. So the ultra wide lens is great. And then if you don't need that ultra wide lens, you just kind of want to chill, chill in the cut. You can always just put it back on that regular wide lens and you're good to go pimp it. So yeah, the lenses on the iPhone 13 Pro are a plus. And then the last pro for me has to be cinematic mode. Like I've tried this mode and it is, man, I have, it is trippy, like for real. Just, I mean, the thing about it that's trippy the most is that it's all done digitally and you can actually adjust it in post. So yeah, cinematic mode, huge plus. And now for the cons though, because we, we gotta talk about the cons, pimping, we gotta talk about the cons. So one of the cons has to be storage. When you're using the iPhone 13 or 13 Pro, you can't just plug an SD card in it and just pop it out or whatever when you want. No, you can't do that. Instead, you just gotta make sure you got enough space on your phone to actually do some vlogging, do some recording, back it up to your computer or hard drive, and then delete it if you run the low on storage. So that is a con. And now another con is when you are vlogging or you making content, like you doing your thing, you could get interrupted with a phone call or like a text. Like it's just little things like that. It's like, like you out there, you in the groove, you vlogging it up, you're like, yo, blah, 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 blah. And then the phone ring, it just completely throws you out of your like groove, you know? So I think that's a con to me. And then I would say the biggest con is it's a bit uncomfortable. Like it's unsettling sometimes when you're out filming or you're just making content with your cell phone. This may not be for a lot of people, but definitely for me. Like for me, my phone has so much personal information on it that if I lose it or someone just happened to snatch it while I'm grabbing some B-roll, I don't know what I'm gonna do. So yeah, that, that's why it's unsettling. And then just one more con I would have to say is the image quality and now hold up pimpin i know that was a pro but it's also a con because it does look way too over sharpened and way too digital 
and it's hard to fix in post. Like I've tried to play around with softening some of the videos I've shot and it is really hard. Like it, it almost makes it look worse. So I don't know, it's just way too sharp. And you really notice this in certain situations. Like it's like hit or miss in, in like whether it's either low light, medium light, it's something like that. And if you're pointing the camera to your skin, the skin tone looks so digital. Your face just looks so digital. It's unnatural. And I don't know why, like certain situations looks amazing, other situations looks terrible. Like it's just way too over sharp and way too much of a digital look for me. I mean, for me, Pippin, I mean, that's just for me. But though, when you shoot like that B-roll or just shooting any other shots, it freaking looks amazing. And wow, like it, it really does look solid. Also, quick side note, the stabilization also kind of surprised me too. I thought it was gonna be a lot worse, but no, it's pretty good. But yeah, back to the main question, Pippin, is this a great camera for content creators? And I would have to say, overall, Yes, it is. I mean, it does a great job getting what you need. It's in your pocket all the time. You always have your cell phone on you. So I would have to say, yeah, it, it could be great for content creators, like for real. But yeah, what do you guys think though? I would love to know. I laid everything out for you guys, giving you guys all the footage. What do you guys think about the iPhone 13 Pro being, being used to make your videos? Like, just let me know in the comments down below. And that is it, Pimpin. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that like button because you know it helps out the channel a lot. And also hit that subscribe button if you are new because you are a boss and we are on our way to 10K. So hit that subscribe button if you are new. And if you just felt like the video was too short or you're feeling like you still don't know what to get between a GoPro, an iPhone, DJI Pocket 2, or a Sony A7S III, click some of these videos down below, Pimpin. I got you. Sky money. So yeah, click on some of these videos down here. But until then, I will see you in the next one.